my end, so here's another fun one. Um, I've taken a piece of towel, burlap, a piece of burlap works really well. And I've added just, uh, I've added our two colors. Um, wet it down just a little bit. You can do this, you can just dump this in the bucket, but I don't want a dirty bucket. So I'm gonna get this rag saturated and I'm gonna roll it up like this and roll it through the paint like this. You ready? That's a little heavy. More like this is better. This might be a little better. Let's, let's bring some of that out. So this is a little more textury looking. All this, this is rag roll. It's another great, fast, what you want to be careful unless, unless you want that look is doing this. Unless you want a wallpaper look. That gives you a little, a kind of a wallpaper pattern. Alternately, uh, changing this around directional, that will give you a um, more freeform kind of look. This was too heavy. This this was too wet to begin. That's too heavy. So in this neighborhood, well, but again, depending on the look you want to have. That's the thing about a lot of this is what look do we want to have? Okay, let's go back over here. All right. There's your stencil look. So um, if we were to, this is kind of wide, but if I was to do, say, I wanted to make it look, we needed a ground row upstage. Uh, if you, the set was an interior, it had French doors that opened out. Behind that, we had the psych up and lit, but I needed something to hide the psych lights. So we might make it, I wanted, oh, it should look like a little brick wall, I could say take a two foot high, three foot high flat, put it on its edge, base paint it in a gray tone, probably a little darker than this. Then draw it all out in block sizes, stagger it pattern, tape it, then spatter it two or three different colors. You could come back and stipple on that too, whatever. Let that dry, peel that up, and it looks like a block wall. Especially if you go back in there and uh, you can accentuate, I don't know if this, a little bit bigger brush, but for lining, I'm gonna come around this way. So if I was to come back in these screws, I could push those a little darker maybe. If I was gonna line something, just kind of freehanding this a little bit. Then, lightly wet it, all right, dap rag. And I've lifted that up. Now you see you've got a, a light side and we have a darker side. If I run that harder along that edge, I can run that line right on down with my thumb, with my finger. So that goes from this color to it gets a little darker till it gets dark. So that would be the shadow, highlight, shadow. And that was just with a rag, paint on it, and my finger. See, this is just the brush and wet it and wet, but I can soften that. I can keep coming back here and lifting. See, this is just, just, let's just pick up some color here. 
That's just with a finger. This is what we really like here because it goes light to dark. But again, that's just, just with a rag in your finger. Now I can go back here and I can lift, see I can, I can lift up. I'm taking more and more color off. All right? This guy right here, this brush, and it was in the roofing department. And it's really stiff, and it doesn't have a real handle. It comes with a handle, a wooden handle that is tapered. So one handle, go, it goes in there, it'll go in there like this. You can put one handle in there like that. And I looked at that, I thought that might be just what I'm looking for. So let's, let's see if we can, how this does. I'm kind of running out of room here, but let's. I'm just gonna run this through everything. So remember, this is gonna be for a floor, so it can be fairly heavy and it can read I mean, I can read, I can read it. It's, that's way too heavy. This is too heavy. Right in here. This is what I'm really looking for. Right in through here. Um, I would do this, being as straight as I can. I might, I might start on a chalk line, and work my way off that chalk line, maintaining that straight line. And either with a, but then I can come back in with a brush on a straight edge. Come on. Right. It's kind of light, but that's going to work. You're going to get the idea, right? You get the idea. When you pick up and lay down, I'm going along, I've picked up, and I'm gonna lay down. I don't just stick it and go. I slide it, slide it back into place to try to keep it consistent. I don't have enough paint here. But try and keep it consistent. And you can line them out. You know, then I would, I, you know, if I was the whole floor, I'd. I'd move this over, and I just keep right on lining my floor or my my, my uh, wooden fence. I want a wooden fence, you know. Look, so I'm gonna take this guy and do this. Depends how deep I want this, you know. When you do wood, I could do two sides at once. I could be this could be an ambidextrous board. Whoa, that was a big, so we're screwed up there. So let's make this a feature. We'll make that a bit of a knot maybe, something like that. Anyway, but, so there's lining. Right? But if you look at this piece of wood, what do we see here? If we can get a good, we see there's one shade, there's another shade. Uh, well, this one, this one, this is the same. It might get a little bit lighter, but so you pick, you pick yourself a base color that you like uh, to do your wood in. Then you come back in and that's your base color. Then you can come in and line it thusly. Uh, you can do this with a feather. They make a, a tool called a graining tool, but the problem with and it, it's, it's a curved piece that you drag along. The problem with that is it tends to repeat 
the pattern repeats every foot and a half or so. So you got to be really careful about that. But because grain is, you know, grain is very, it depends on the wood. Some grain is very straight. You can come back in and, you know, add. That's a little heavy, but see what I mean? You can add variance to that, whatever. And in different tones, you can give it a little of that. You can give it a little, uh, you know. God, you've picked up your flashing materials, um, and you can get started on these. Uh, and there'll be instructions in Canvas about what we're doing. Uh, you're going to put your skin on first, glue it on, take a picture of that, send it to me. After that's right, size it. Take a picture, send it to me. If you send me a video of you thumping it, would I want to hear that good drum sound. Um, after that sizing, then you can trim it. Uh, your flats, which are about this size, if you want to take, base your flat, and this will all be repeated, if you base your flat in one of the two colors you like, if you want the two colors, you can make them into a third color, whatever you, however you want to do it. Take a section of your flat, give me a demo of the dry a little dry brush, a little scumble, maybe a little rag roll, some of these, give me a little sample on there. Send that to me. Then I want you to, uh, if you want to leave it like that, that's fine. Paint over it and paint whatever you want on it. However you want to paint it. And I just want to see what it looks like when you're done. It's, uh, I always like that portion of it because uh, I see some really nice pieces of art, which is really cool for you guys to do. And then it's yours to keep or throw away, or whatever you're going to do with it. Or collect them up and make saw horses out of them like we do. Okay, thank you.